A liberation is another word for freedom. And really it's just an idea. There really isn't, there is there really isn't any liberation. Um, not in the sense that there's someone to be freed, to, to gain freedom, to attain freedom. Um, and the thing is, as a seeker, that's, that's the only thing I can hear. When I hear the word liberation, I, I can only hear, I can be free. I can gain freedom. And um, if I, if, as I would speak about liberation, as, as it would come out here, if I use the word liberation, I'm using it as liberation from me. But again, that's just another story. There is no liberation from me either. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a misnomer, but in the story, because that's all we have, comparing how it is living life as me, um, in comparison to living life without feeling that this is my life and I'm living it, then we can call that liberation. Liberation from all that the self inhibited life. Well, there is in the story, isn't there? Yeah, of course there is. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you could say there's liberation from self and then there's lots of stories about um, um, once, once the, the human being is free from itself, from the, uh, from the illusory notion of being himself, herself, then there could be a deepening. Um, <laughs> but for me, for me, they're all just more stories about hope. And the trouble with using liberation as a term is, of course, it sounds hopeful. It sounds, it sounds attainable. Even if, even if you listen to the speaker, even if you listen to the words and you hear that there is no liberation for the one who's seeking it, self can't but hear that there is and so and and along with enlightenment so i guess i guess the state that usually um comes after liberation in most people's stories is enlightenment but there's no there's no liberation and there's no enlightenment there's just this and this is just whatever it is it's just it's too simple so even to talk about liberation is kind of misleading. I, I have to say I do it, but um, we are very limited in what words we can use. So freedom from me, not for me. There we are, that's the simplest way of putting it. Hope is the belief in the future. And um, that's, the, that's the nature of me. I, I'm always hoping that this will be better that this will be fulfilled, that I can be fulfilled. So there's two, there's two aspects to hope. There's hope for me and then there's hope for the world. And, and they're, not, they're not really two. I see, I see making the world a better place for me. That's hope. Because the nature of self is unfulfilled, it can't help but hope for um, a future in which there will be completion and wholeness and everything else the self hopes for it can be really basic it could be material it could be you know hoping for a new car or a new house <laughs> but um in the spiritual seekers life then it tends to be stories of liberation and stories of enlightenment stories of freedom stories just there you go hope is a story and it's all about time. Yeah, it is, but not in the sense that <laughs> that I thought hopeless of of what I I used to believe that hopeless men. So um, it's quite paradoxical because what we're calling liberation, which you could just say um, the sense of separation, just not not happening anymore is um <laughs> if that if that seems to occur 
then it is definitely the end of hope because it's very obvious that there isn't a future in which there could be more than this, that this is already whole and complete and that there isn't anything else. And of course that sounds hopeless, which it is in the sense of is the absence of hope, but it's not hopeless in that with hope, with the absence of hope, there is the absence of hopelessness as well. One depends upon the other. This is really the essence of non-duality. Um, self lives in opposites. And if, if one opposite disappears or stops having it, the relevance and the significance and the reality that it had for me, then the opposite also just evaporates. So without hope, there's no hopelessness either. Because, of course, hopeless is simply the opposite of hope. So no hope, no hopelessness. Which, I mean that in the sense of the negativity of hopeless, as, as self would perceive it. As, as, I, you know, as most me's think about hopeless, then it's depressing. You know, the, they're almost synonymous words, hopelessness and depression really go together. I mean, this character knows about depression and knows about hopelessness. And that is not what we are talking about at all. It is the end of hope and the end of hopeless. You could say, it was, yeah, certainly that's, um, yeah, that would be, that would be uh, <laughs> That would be one of the benefits you could say because of course everyone wants to know so so what am i getting out of this <laughs> well of course the, the the answer is nothing but then that that's kind of misleading otherwise I, I don't think anyone would speak about this if there weren't if there weren't some benefits for the human being not to have that weight of self to carry around you know, carrying myself. So, sorry, you're going to have to ask me the question again. <laughs> what was it? No, because I've, hopefully I just described that. Um, I, I really don't describe this as hopeless. It is, it, it, you can say it's hopeless, but then I think that's always misheard. It's misheard in a negative way. And of course, there is no hope, but no hope isn't hopeless. Well, well, I think that's that. That's one of the. Um, that's a really contentious question because each human being appears to go through a process in the attainment of liberation. You could say to end up in a state of no self. Of course, there is no state of no self. So you have to say, no, there is no process at all. There is just a memory of an apparent story which the human being went through in order to be here. But that is one of the things that's most obvious is it's just a story. There is no getting here. So the whole notion of process becomes, you, I can talk about it, but I can only talk about it from what you call a personal level of what memories are here. And then I could tell you some stories of what other, other human beings have told me about their awakening story, their story of towards liberation. But, but one of the most, one of the most shocking things about this is that there is no process. And by that, I, I really mean there is no process in anything. This, this, this stuff hasn't been created in time. The absence of time is, is really, it's absolutely impossible to convey. I think it's harder to convey than the notion of no self. Um, <laughs> And they and they they go hand in hand. They're not they're not two because of course without when my story is just another story and it's not mine, that is the end of time. 
there, you know, time doesn't have, time is just a story. It's just a way we can communicate about apparently something happened yesterday and that led to what we've got today. And this is happening now and this will appear to lead to something tomorrow. And the ability to speak in that way, in the storytelling way, doesn't alter in any, in any shape or form. It's exactly the same. So in that sense, nothing changes. But it, the, the change is um, indescribable because th that's seen to be no more than a very elaborate story that we are able to tell each other. So to answer your question very straightforwardly, I went around the houses a bit there, is there is no process. Nothing ever happens. Just, just things seem to happen. I mean, the, 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 most, the most radical thing of all is this isn't happening. This is all there is. And this isn't happening. It's appearing to happen. Now that, now that, it, that's that's the that's the most radical part of this message of all. I mean, there's no. It's, it leaves you dumbfounded. Even when I sp even speaking about it now, it's just like, well, how can that be? Well, there will be absolutely no way of knowing how that is. But that is how it is. <laughs> so, of course, then all, all ideas, all notions of, of process become, uh, they become very light. You can talk about process and what seems to have happened very easily because that holds no weight at all. You know, it's just Jack and Ori. It's just, um, it's just a fairy tale. No. Yes. <laughs> there's a there's um so you could say to all other human beings there's Tim. And Tim Tim seems a bit different than he used to be. He's a bit odd. He's he's <laughs> he's sort of, he stopped doing what he used to do and um now he talks some shit about non-duality or something, non-something anyway. And um, so it appears the human being has changed. And in a way, the other human beings who say Tim's changed are right, but in another way, they're not at all because there never was a Tim to change in the first place. Um, <laughs> the notion that we know others becomes completely nonsensical along with the notion that I know myself. So there is, there is the character, there is the human being who's known as Tim Cliss. That's what there is. What that is, is it's in fact, it's fine to say whatever anyone wants to say about what Tim Cliss is or what Emerson is, because it's completely unknowable. So there isn't a, there isn't a self called Tim Cliss, but there is a human being. I tend to say human being all the time. It seems, um, it seems more, um, I used to say character. So you could say there's a character called Tim and there's a body called Tim, but there isn't, there isn't a me called Tim, but other, but of course, every other me who meets Tim thinks there is because because me can't me can't ever see other human beings without a self because the notion of uh, one thing that self always does from my, from my knowing I am I infer you are so I am a me you are you are a me you're you I'm me you're you they're they're absolutely solid for most for most human beings they don't ever question it so it's best if you don't mention that you um you don't have a self or you there is no me because, because that's that's fine <laughs> that's fine to say it to yourself 
but don't say it to other me's because they won't like it. Uh, it was neither. It was neither of those. Um, in the story, you would say, I would say gradual, but it, again, it didn't happen. So, and there was no knowing. There's still no knowing of no self. That is not knowable. And I think that's one of the, uh, that's, that's one of the great stumbling blocks for a seeker because they're waiting until they all know. I'm waiting until I know no self. Well, of course, <laughs> what would you see? What would you know? What would you find? What, what, would, what would no self look like? Well, it would look like nothing. And how would you see nothing? That's, that's the problem with speaking about this. Um, that as a seeker, you can't help but infer the one, the, the human being who's speaking about this must know what they're speaking about. And it's very clear they don't. Now, as a seeker, I, of course, I always thought, well, you wouldn't speak about this if you didn't know what you were speaking about. But no, that is, believe it or not, it's the not knowing that allows the speaking. That all the freedom is in the not knowing, and that's where the words come from. All these words come from not knowing. And of course, me can't ever even begin to grasp that because the self is based on knowledge. That's what I am. I am what I know. And um, I don't even know what the question was again, Emerson. Sorry. <laughs> what was it? I forgot. But look, I have a cheat sheet. Um, <laughs> I really like so the answer. I'm guessing, <laughs> I'm, guessing the, I'm guessing the answer was no. I can't even remember what the question was. Uh, yes, was awakening or freedom for the Kim? Oh, so in the, store, in the story, excruciatingly, painfully, dreadfully slow. And um, and there was there wasn't an end to it, in the sense of I what I was waiting for the end, which was knowing when myself had gone, and that didn't happen. So as a seeker, I was waiting for something that, of course, can't happen because there is no me for any human being, just the illusion of it. And so the illusion disappears. It's not, a, it's, there's nothing to notice. And there isn't anything replacing. That's the other, that's the other thing that I was, I, as a seeker, I could only imagine something replacing what, so in the absence of me, there will be something in its place that will be recognizable that I could see and know. And that's not how it is. Literally nothing emptiness so the only thing that came out of this mouth for weeks and weeks and weeks was this is so empty because of course in the absence of me then there was a lot of space where me that i used to fill with me with all my self-talk with all my thoughts and my anxieties of myself um so there were there were two things that were really noticeable so there was no noticing the absence of myself but what there was what was really noticeable was emptiness and peace you see suffering's a tricky word because again um different people mean different things when they say suffering um so I would, all natural suffering that, you know, we would say animals suffer. So pain, you know, physical pain and emotional pain as well. Um, what, what there is some, what there is some freedom from, I wouldn't say complete, but almost uh, is from neurotic pain that you'd call it in psychology. Um, anxiety, guilt, remorse, regret. Um, 
the things that really hurt, psychologically hurt, that me makes a lot of fuss about. Yeah, but not not pain. So you could say that there's some liberation. I, I can't say complete liberation because, of course, human human life is human life. I mean, otherwise, you know, physical death. If you if you're going to live as a human being, self or no self, there's going to be pain. And um, if you, I, I'm very wary of saying the end of suffering, which I've heard. I've I heard that and chased it myself, like most seekers have. have if you've suffered psychologically, then of course, a lot of um, paths to enlightenment or liberation can seem really very very attractive because they're they're dangling the golden carrot of the end of suffering but of course life is life is pain life is painful life is love and love is the greatest pain it's the greatest joy and the greatest pain and without me there's there's really no filter I, I, it's very obvious that I filtered love to keep me from pain, you know, just to save myself. I didn't want to, I didn't want to feel it all. Um, so you could say there's, there's more pain because there's no filter. There's no, um, all the defense mechanisms that I might have used to defend myself against life, against love, um, they're not available to no one. They're only available to me. They're what me use to keep the illusion of me safe. And um, so you could say life is more painful, but in a much easier way, in a much lighter way. I don't know.